Hey everybody, Stephen Butler back again with a new update, a uh, working update this time of uh, Fiona McCool and the Hound of Ulster, our, uh, my daughter Lily and my Kickstarter uh, that we are uh, in the, uh, currently in the middle of. Uh, and the Kickstarter is going great. We're really excited about it. Uh, um, I think we are around 75, 76% funded uh, right now. I think we have like 13 days to go. So we can do this, guys. I want to say thank you to everybody who has, <clears throat> who has uh, committed by making a pledge or even you guys that have shared uh, uh, the, uh, the Kickstarter among your friends and stuff. Every little bit helps and we appreciate all of it. This is a, a really, um, a labor, a labor of love for us. And it's, uh, it's something that, uh, I've been doing for a long, long time, but I've always done it for, for companies, done comic book work and stuff like that for, for companies this time. So it's, it's, it means the, the stakes are higher, but it also means a lot more to us, uh, my, it's my, it's mine and my daughter's first uh, comic book to be doing together uh, as a father-daughter team, and I haven't really talked about that, about how rare uh, that is, but um, we're really excited about it. And uh, today, uh, actually, right now, I'm going to be doing a uh, commission, a a black and white bust commission. This is from the tier eleven. Uh, hero level. If you go to our Kickstarter, you can see that level. Uh, it is the black and white eight and a half by eleven bus commission. This is of could be of uh, a character of your choice. I think there's ten spots available. I think one of them is taken, so I think there's still nine nine spots available. So right now, I'm just going to start drawing, and I'm going to be doing a bust shot of a character. And I'm just going to, I'm just winging it here, guys, so just follow with me. This, all, this is also serving as, a, of course, a, um, a uh, just a uh, drawing video, uh, basically, to showcase my, uh, how I go about doing. Uh, of course, you can see now who I'm, who I'm drawing here. Um, I'm doing, a, I'm doing an old standby Batman here. Um, so you can, I'm doing this uh, from start to finish and doing it in real time. I know I do a lot of videos where I'm just uh, drawing uh, and I'm just doing a voiceover. I'll probably put some kind of thing over here or something um, where I'm just doing like a voiceover and then I'll uh, and, and the, 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 the actual drawing is sped up. I didn't want to do that this time. I wanted it to be like a real a real time real time thing. So, uh, so you guys can see the, the, the whole process of, uh, from pencils, from pencils to ink. Cause it, and you can see now I'm when I, and I do all, all of these are the done the same exact way. I'm, uh, just drawing really loosely and I'm not choking up on the, actually I could probably even go even looser than that and probably go faster. Um, but I've drawn these characters so much and so often Bat Batman like Spider-Man and Sonic and several of the others. Uh, is one of those characters that I, I really don't ha need any any f reference. I don't need to look at any photo reference or look at a comic book to see how Neil Adams or somebody drew him. I'm uh, just uh, going by memory of drawing him so much. Uh, and right now, I'm just blocking out where I think the uh, where I think his uh, the shadows would go. I'm doing it really lightly too because I know I'm gonna be coming back in and. And uh, um, I'll be coming back in and erasing a lot of this, uh, a lot of this stuff. Let's see, I made his chin a little bit bigger here. I want to erase that so it won't even be in the way. All right. And whenever I'm inking myself, uh, I don't have to go in really tight uh, with the uh, with the inks. I mean, with the. Uh, with the pencil lines, I don't have to go uh, really tight with it because I know pretty much uh, how I'm going to be inking it. And a lot of times it's just like free form. I just go in and I, I think about it as I'm, you know, as I'm doing it. It's, I don't really have a, a rigid uh, guideline that I set for myself. But so you can kind of tell uh, what a finished inking. Uh, I mean, a finished pencil would look like. I'm going to go in and tighten in just a little area here so you can kind of see. And I'll do it on his 
on his face here because that's really that's really the part that gives him his uh, person. <laughs> I was gonna say it gives him his personality, but well, this is the this is the later Batman. I would say the Batman that I'm drawing here would be one that you would have seen like in the 70s, 80s, or whatever, and that was the beginning of his grim uh, era. I'm not talking about the uh, the uh, the 19. Well, actually, early early 19. 40s, late 30s, or early 40s, he was, he was most definitely in the grim era. But it it took until Robin was introduced into the mix that he he became something um, a little bit different. He became, <laughs> as my kids called him, the smiling Batman, uh, and stayed that way for for years and years. And of course, that's what that's the version of Batman that uh, we all grew up uh watching uh on tv with the uh adam west and burt ward show and all of those cast of amazing uh villains and and uh characters background characters that uh made that show so special all right so you know i don't know if i'm not thinking batman has a cleft chin but you know what? He's going to have a little bit of an intention in this one. All right. And you never know. I mean, I, I don't know if they've ever... I don't know if they've ever mentioned Batman's age, what his uh, what his age would be. I mean, is he in his... Is he parentally in his early 30s, late 20s? I, I really... I really don't... I really don't know. But, you know, we draw him, uh, you know, with... Uh, he's He's got to have a, a hardened look, and that's just because he's, you know... He's grim and determined and has a set, you know, has a set jaw. He's all the time, he's all serious all the time. At least this version of him, of him is. Uh, so I'm going in here and working on his mus muscles just a little bit. But what I'm doing here is just uh, showing you, I'm talking to you as I'm drawing, as I'm drawing this, uh, what these busts are going to look like. So, and you could have one of these. Uh, like I said, it is... Uh, remember what level it is yeah it's at the 200 it's at the 200 dollar level and you get a lot of other stuff too you get a digital pdf of the fiona mccool and the hound of ulster comic you get the actual comic itself uh your name listed in a special thanks section a 10 count trading card set i'm reading on our on our kickstarter page by the way uh six count sticker set uh, signed 11 by 17 map of Emrelore, which is the land that Fiona McCool inhabits, and then a signed uh, 11 by 17 print, special print that we're doing for this, and then you also get this black and white bust commission. So we're hoping that uh, for the price you, that you'll get a lot of, val of value uh, with with that price. And this, what I'm doing here now, is just kind of a um, an example, uh, and. Uh, if you so want it, if somebody so wants it, this could be one of the actual, one of the actual uh, pieces that uh, that you could get uh, as a as a commission. All right, now I'm going into the inking stage, and I'm trying to remember the the, the name of this, but it's all in, it's all in I guess Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. Uh, I don't know the name of this uh, brand. Uh, I think we bought it at Hobby Lobby, I think. But uh, it's a it's a brush pen that has actual bristles in the in the, in the brush, and the ink is in this barrel uh, right here. Once this barrel is used up, you can take the barrel off this part here, keep this part, get a new barrel, stick it on, and you're good and you're good to go. But I really like the way these the way these work. They give a good, nice, thick and thin line, and I'm about to show that to you. So here we go. I'm going to start inking right here. And sometimes to get the to get the ink to work, you have to squeeze the barrel a little bit until you see it come out. See those see those bubbles as they come come out here. That just means that the that the ink is coming out. And I did it over a spot. If I if it if it uh, if it came out too much, then it would it would uh, go out onto an area that was supposed to be black anyway. At least in theory, that's what's supposed to work. Now it's flowing really well. And um, whenever I'm inking with a brush. One of the re or brush pen as it as it were. I, it, this does the same thing as like a inking with a inking with a brush. I really enjoy uh, doing this because you can work really fast uh, uh, with this. Now it takes a takes a little bit of getting used to. 
I don't know a whole lot of other brush inkers that are out there now uh, who are like traditional old school type brush inkers. A lot of guys that I know that I see at conventions and, uh, and other places, they're using, they're using micron pens and they're using other, other types of things and nothing wrong with that at all. It's just your own personal preference. But I, I learned brush inking when I first got into comics, good Lord, over 30 years ago. And so uh, it's worked for me all these years, so I don't really see a reason to, uh, to, stop, to stop doing it, especially if it, if it f what's the word, facilitates uh, your ability to get the work done in a timely manner. And see how you can really go in with the, almost you're like almost cutting in shapes uh, with, uh, with this, you just got to know, when, I guess you just got to know where the shapes are gonna, are gonna go. There's really no, uh, I guess you can play around with it a little bit and make uh, happy mistakes or whatever, but you, that's what the pencil, uh, stage is for, to set that framework, uh, for the, for the inking, inking to, uh, to come in at. And I'm, since it's Batman, I'm playing with the, uh, I forget what, it's a chiaroscuro, the uh, play of light and dark. So, I'm just uh, kind of almost like sculpting an ink or whatever. And, uh, and you notice one, another thing, that even guys that do use brushes, and I didn't mean to imply that not, that not everybody use uh doesn't use uh b brushes now some people do it's just the majority of people that i see at conventions and stuff they use uh they use markers instead of or not markers uh, they use uh, like micron pins and stuff uh, pins that have like a stiff you know a stiff that a stiff nib that give you just one one line instead of a, a line that you can vary by pressure that's the that's the beauty of using uh, brushes is that the more pressure you put down the thicker the line gets and that thick and thin to me um, is what is what gives uh, a comic book drawing uh, life and vitality that uh, and you can get that with pen it's just well at least for me it takes longer you know to, to, to do and man I gotta go <laughs> I got a lot of I got a lot of these things that I've gotta that I've gotta work and whatever thing that I can find to help me facilitate me going from one project to another and still giving me the quality that I need to uh, to get out of these things then that's the kind of material that I'm going to use and these brush pens definitely fit the bill so it's one of those things if it ain't broke don't fix it. <laughs> Keep using it. All right, and I don't. I almost turned a, turned his uh, cape into like a collar there. Kind of, kind of like it. Sometimes you, I don't really know what I'm. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just playing around until you find something that actually works, and you say, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, keep, I'm gonna keep pushing it in that direction and see what, see what happens." Right, kind of like that. It's almost like it's a hood, you know, that he's pulled that he's pulled down. Uh, I've drawn a lot of characters with hoods, so I guess it came as like of a natural thing. The Scarlet Spider. Uh, I've drawn him enough times, and he has that hood that I always use to uh, help show motion. He doesn't have a cape. Capes are always good. Batman, of course, is the probably. He and Superman are the two prime examples of characters that have capes that are uh, that are that can be used to show motion and used to show action because that cape is going to be flying in the wind, or it's going to be showing uh, how fast the character is going, like in Superman's case, or in Batman's case, like where he's like landing down and the cape's fluttering all over the place, or the way it's snaking around. Uh, his body, uh, and you can do some really dramatic things with the, you know, with the cape. And of course, I'm doing a bus shot, so you're not going to see a whole lot of the cape in this. But I think you guys know what I'm talking about. You can use a lot of stuff with 
with capes, but with like a character called Scarlet Spider, he doesn't have a cape. So to, sh to help show motion, I use that, I use that hoodie that he wears, the hood part of it, to do a similar type of thing that you would get out of a cape. Like when he's swinging around the city, I use that, uh, that hoodie to be flying in the air behind him to show motion and give it the dynamism that it wouldn't have otherwise. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm cutting into, I'm making these like lighter lines here. And you see, I gave him the eyebrows and that's straight up from the Adam West show. I don't even know if they used that type of thing a lot in the comics, even back in the like the 70s and like the Neil Adams and uh, I, I think Carmine Infantino used it. <clears throat> but uh, but anyway, I, you can give Batman even extra menace or grim set determination uh, features by using by using this and then these lines in here are kind of just more of his uh, you know I do not think what you're doing is funny type of uh, type of look kind of a scowl it helps uh, it helps show how how much of a scowl he has now I'm gonna go in and do this right here this is called feathering where you take a uh, you taper the taper the brush and you, you see how I pulled it, pulled it to, uh, away from my body. That's pretty much how I, how I work. I'm, give me just a second. I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm gonna take this wedge Sharpie and fill in this black area here. And hopefully I won't run out of, uh, out of, I love these Sharpies to fill in big areas like this. And I use them of course for sketches at uh, conventions and stuff it's just that they they don't whenever they're done with ink and it doesn't really take them take them that long you have to chunk them uh but anyway here we go i'm actually going to use it here a little bit Let's see what i can go up here i'm thinking on my well i was going to say i'm thinking on my feet but i'm sitting on my butt so <laughs> i'm thinking as i'm going uh yeah, I kind of like that. Now let's see where I can take this from. Go up here with this. And I'm going to add a few lines like here. See how I'm light, light touch to give it that light, light feel. So I'm going from a, I'm going from like a dark to a light. I'm almost showing like a gradation type of, uh, type of thing there. This is kind of weird because I'm... <laughs> I'm talking, I'm doing two things here. I'm showing how this is going to be a, uh, a like a promotional or a, a reward level thing for our Kickstarter. And I'm also giving an art, <laughs> not a, I guess it is an art lesson. Uh, as I'm, as I'm doing it, I'm basically just talking, talking to myself. And uh, hopefully you guys are getting something out of this. I'd love to hear your comments on this. I, I've, I've started a YouTube channel. Uh, and I would love for you to uh, check it out and subscribe uh, to it. I'm going to be doing a whole lot more videos uh, now because I've finally realized that video is where it's at to advertise your brand, yourself. And uh, I got several ideas that I want to do, all of them comic related, but not all of them drawing related. So, uh, so I uh, just, if you would, Check out my check out my channel if you like what you see. Uh, click uh, click subscribe, and uh, and uh, I think you have to like hit a bell or something. I don't know to get notifications uh, for new videos that are uh, that are coming out. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, I'll be doing more stuff like this. In fact, this is not going to be the only one of these that I'm going to be doing. In fact, I might do another one of these tomorrow of a different of a different character because I'm actually quite enjoying this. But uh, what would make it even more enjoying, jo enjoyable is if I get to read your comments uh, in the uh, in the comment section. I'd love to get your uh, to get your feedback, uh, whatever you would uh, like to uh, to mention. If you have a question for me, uh, you know, like, hey, would you, could you show me how to work on shading a little bit more or a different type of could you use different types of pins or whatever to uh, uh, 
uh, to showcase what you're doing? And, and the answer is yes, I could do, I could do all of that. I'm just doing this as a way of basically showing you how I, I normally, I normally work going into his, going into his face now. And this is where you, I don't know, you gotta be a little bit more particular because you get going into the, the mouth, the eyes, of course, Batman, he just has the white, <laughs> the white areas for, uh, eyes you can't see his pupils or anything and that makes him all mysterious and stuff kind of like uh i think um i don't think batman was the first to start that i think that honor with the with where you take the pupils out of the character's eyes and it makes them more mysterious i think the phantom uh comic strip character was the first to employ that uh because he was like the first uh one of the first if not the first masked superhero i don't guess he was a superhero but a, a masked uh character that appeared in the in the comics and then of course batman was not very far after after that there were a few more but batman came out in 39 i think it was uh, right after right after superman did so he's had a long long history and that speaking of which that's another thing that i'm interested in i'm interested in comic book history and um i'm thinking about doing a uh doing a series of videos about that about comic book history uh and talking about some of the comics of my youth uh some of the comics that i remember growing up reading and of course this guy right here was played a big part uh played a big part in that okay so i was, uh, so i've got the uh, feathering going on this side that means my light is shining this way and so if i'm doing it down here i probably need to have it up here as well just to make it uh uniform and uh, it makes a visual logic and you see how i'm tapering these and i'm just going side by side and i'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller just to sh just to show a, a, gra a great a gradual slope there do it right here as well all right now I'm gonna go down I'm almost done with this so it's actually taken not taken quite as long as I thought that it would the all-important bat symbol here and I'm giving him the big bat symbol here just because it's gonna be in black and white and it's not a big deal that I can give him the big bat. and I know that this is I guess this is pretty much what he looks like now but whenever I was uh, reading Whenever I first, my first memories of reading comics, that would have been 1970, oh God, I'm sure I'm age now, 1972, three, something like that. Um, back when Neil Adams was still, was still drawing the, drawing the book. And uh, Irv, the guy named Irv Novick uh, was drawing it uh, as well at that time. Um, it, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, the symbol. Uh, the symbol didn't look like this. It was smaller and it had a yellow oval around it. It looked like the bat signal uh, on his on his actual on his chest, and so and it stayed that way for a long, long time. It didn't really. I don't think it really became like this until the uh, Frank Miller uh, Dark Knight book came out. I think that's basically when. I could be wrong, uh, but uh, I think that's basically when uh, the style of his uh, symbol. Uh, got rid of the yellow oval around it and the the actual bat uh, symbol became bigger I don't know again we're talking comic history I'd have to go back and look it and look it up but if I can remember right I lived through all of that stuff but I it's hard for me to remember remember all of it and of course here lately Batman has gone through so many different changes with the movies coming out and and you know the adopting like the armored look type of type of thing and that's pretty much all superheroes these even <laughs> i remember when that new 52 stuff uh came out i'm like superman looks like he's wearing armor even whoa what's he got armor on for he doesn't need armor he can shred ar armor but uh i don't know that's that's uh that's just the new way of doing things i guess new styles the styles come and go i'm old school myself and i'm kind of seeing some of the old school uh aesthetic I guess uh, coming back in style not so much in comics but I, I see I see uh, little kids wear wearing t-shirts and 
and uh, even having backpacks and uh, leggings and all different kinds of things that are uh, that have like uh, old school artwork on it, like Jack Kirby's art. I remember seeing one kid at a convention recently, and he was wearing an old uh, t a t-shirt that had Jack Kirby's Black Panther on it. And I said, "Man, that's a cool shirt." And the and the kid said, "Thank you." And I said, "Do you know who drew that shirt?" He looked at me like I was crazy. I had no idea, and so I had to I had to tell him who it was and it's I don't I think it meant more to me than it did to him uh but anyway all right now I'm going to go in here and I'm not going to I'm just going to do something really really loose see how I'm using the side of the side of this is kind of like giving it a dry brush effect kind of a thing and I'm going to make this all black in here and so I'm just going to do the outline with this and then I'll go back and get my handy dandy sharpie in here and I hope this is not making the a noise that's similar to the fingers on the uh, chalk <laughs> chalkboard type of thing uh, and why am I doing this I don't know it just seems like it needed I drew the Batman over there on that on that side and, and, and we needed to balance it out over here it's a it's a design thing <laughs> Uh, I took art in school uh, at, uh, at uh, the University of Southern Mississippi, got a bachelor's degree in art. Um, I wish I could say that my degree that I got, I, that I used it for, in, for any of the jobs that I've, that I've gotten in comics, but I would be lying if I said that. Um, but I do believe that I'm better off for having that education, though, you know, the companies that I've worked for, they just want to, they just want to see that you can produce work and that you can produce work on a number one, that's good, that's professional quality. And number two, that you can, that you can actually produce work on a, uh, on a deadline. Okay. Now my noodling side is taking over. I'm seeing something else here. I'm going up here with this. And this see guys what I'm doing I'm kind of I'm seeing something in my in my head that I could go with here basically I'm kind of sort of creating a cityscape in the background here and basically what I'm doing is noodling it now at least that's what my wife said I don't know is that a word noodling uh, whatever, if it is, then I guess I'm the king of it because my wife, uh, Christy, God love her, uh, I do, uh, she, uh, says you're noodling, <laughs> you need to, uh, you need to stop now, <laughs> you've already given enough, uh, she's very, uh, and she's very wise and very, uh, mindful of my time and, uh, but she also knows that I give, I give 100% to every project that I do, so, so anyway, she has been known to take to take the pen, the the pen or pencil or whatever it is I'm working with out of my hand at at, at any given time that I'm working and uh, and say okay that's enough. So I'll put a few things here. You see, it's once I'm into it, it's hard for me to it's hard for me to pull out. So I'm pulling out. I'm imagining that my wife is taking my <laughs> pen out of my hand. All right, now I'm going to go into uh, let's see how tall I had. Yeah, Bic Whiteout, and I'm just gonna add a. This kind of gets caked up over here, so I'll like get get this get that out of it. Make a few windows here, just to kind of give it that urban look. Got this at the Office Depot, I think, or Walmart or somewhere. Most everything that you see me using, you can get uh, uh, at your local either office supply store or your local art art store, like a Michaels or Hobby Lobby or someplace like that. All right, that pretty much is it as far as uh, as far as the type of um, commission that you would be getting in this Fiona McCool Kickstarter. I am now going to sign it. I'm going to sign it with another uh, whiteout pen. Uh, I 
that one out. Oh, here we go. These are the ones that I really like. I use these for like stars. It's a Uniball Signo. I get them from jetpens.com. And I'm going to sign my name down here. And we are going to call it quits on this. But again, a drawing, this drawing or a drawing like this could be yours if you pledge to Fiona McCool and the Hound of Ulster at the tier 11 hero level. This is your black and white commission. This one of Batman, but it can be any character that you so that you so choose. Thanks so much for watching me do this, guys. Uh, be on the lookout again uh, for more uh, videos just like this. Please help us continue to support our Kickstarter and let's get this thing let's get this thing funded. We've got 13 days to go and we can do it, but we need your help in getting it done. Thanks again so much. Keep watching my channel and we'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye bye.